Hello, and welcome to episode nine of I'm Fine, which rhymes. Mm -hmm. A chat between myself, Damo, and the podcast's main attraction, Mark. (laughs) Based on what? (laughs) Uh, Your comments last time. All right, yeah, yeah. About me being a pantomime horse or something. (laughs) Um, This is a chat around the subjects of health, wealth, well-being, fitness, sport, conspiracy. We'll get to that. And why we'd all choose invisibility as a superpower. Well, the voyeurs amongst us. (laughs) I love the, um, just a quick plug for the Instagram, your picture of the Space Cadet invisibility helmet. <laughs> yeah. It looks good, doesn't it, to it be does honest? It does look really good. Yeah. Shame we, I think people would buy it now. Yeah, I think there's a market. I'm, I'm not going to not reference your voice in a minute either. It was just, a, okay, you reference away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure people are going to con- be convinced it's you. No, it was just a request. Is that really you? Yeah, it is. It You'll like know you. when, it, when the inane... And it don't start in a minute. <laughs> no, it's it, just requests to be to be deeper and more sexy from a lot of listeners. <laughs> explains the outfit. <laughs> or lack of. The spandex. Uh, we're all work in progress and this podcast is no exception. In short, it's a poke at our perfectly imperfect lives. And if we can make just one person feel like they're not alone in all this madness, then our work here is done. Coming up in this episode we have bookmarks and apologies in warm-up and stretch going to pick up on our moods and music in work life ballet and in mark's special section drop and give me 20 he's going to be showing me a picture of him with no clothes on <laughs> as well as talking about something more more important which is sarcopenia yeah drop and give me 20 in terms of naked photography is like, <laughs> <laughs> has different connotations <laughs> anyway job. can we just before we go any further can i ask how you're doing because i've listened to a few podcasts <laughs> And I'm going to get in there first on this one. I'm, I'm okay. Good. I just, um, I just have your really deep voice in my, in my head. Okay. Headphones. You'll get over I'm the just excitement. Getting, I'm just getting, no, I have. It's <laughs> doing things to me. <laughs> before I, before I talk about my, my morning, are you all right? I mean, yeah. you're obviously, well, we've done a temperature check on you mm-hmm. and we've done a quick COVID test. Um, and you unmasked me. Yeah. And you, <laughs> Cause I'm sitting down and pretending yeah. to have a meal. So COVID can't attack me. That's right. And I put you at the end of the room. Mm-hmm. So In you're a probably, bubble. You, <laughs> yeah. so you're about 20 foot away from me, Yeah, which is a bit weird. Um, the chemistry that everyone's alluding to is going to go, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so you're not feeling very well. I'm all right. I'm okay. Yeah. Should I stop going on about it? No, 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 no. It's fine to go on about it. I was just, it was like I was saying to you is one of the things we were going to chat about, or I was going to allude to a bit later is around immunity. And um, I've sort of blown that one a bit. It's, and uh, how you never get ill. Yeah, yeah. Captain Invincible with a bit of a sniffle. <laughs> it's good all right. Captain it's all Sniffle. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you've had a good morning? What have I done this morning? Oh, well, yeah, I've, I've done what I never do on a Saturday. So I didn't really do anything, really. I didn't go to the track, um, which is exceptional for me not to go. And I listened to a podcast that, to be honest, is almost as good as this one, which we'll be referencing later. I don't believe it. I went and bought... We did say almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bought a newspaper. I didn't read the newspaper, but I thought the buying of it was a good thing. And I then started clearing um, a bedroom in my dad's house. My dad gets a lot of references, doesn't he? Mm. Um, Well, obviously, you know, it's an important time. Yeah. Looking like a father to me. (laughs) But... um, yeah, so, so clearing, clearing a <laughs> clearing a bedroom that was full of nicks and knacks. Okay, yeah, we missed a kind of um, bit of a gag about your dad the other day, didn't we? When we were talking about the funeral and how um, I was asking about these certificates. Oh yeah, yeah. Said it's a bit too late to ask him now. Yeah. You know, kind of, I didn't know how to respond to that, but no, I don't. Uh, it was. I don't want to be flippant. No, I think I, I actually know. mentioned that at the time. Um, I think a lot of people shy away from death and it, it isn't about death. flippancy, but I think it's really interesting that um, one or two of the letters and cards we got from a dad offering sympathy, which were all really nice, but quite often people want to say left us or passed away. And it's almost like heart, died is too harsh to say. Yeah. But also interestingly enough, one or two of the um, clubs that he belonged to sent out sort of newsletter type items on him and felt it necessary to say he wasn't killed by COVID. And I thought Sorry. I thought it was really interesting. Oh, they, they didn't okay. give well, the cause of death. They said, unfortunately, Michael eighty six has passed away. And you'd this assume, was this was you? not COVID related. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really need that. It's like you could say, well, he wasn't run over by a bus. It's it's 
yeah, it isn't relevant. I'm sure that the, the bus running over scenario didn't run through anybody's heads, but COVID no. would have done quite clearly. It would have done, yeah, it? I guess, you but know, maybe wrongly. A, yeah, of course, people of a certain age, you go, well, oh, must have been that. Must have been. Yeah. Um, and on that, I've noticed that the news is just touching on conspiracies. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. the news are now, in terms of when they're reporting about the stats, making it clear that the reported deaths are deaths from um that happened within 28 days of someone being tested yeah. positive yeah which and then and they seem to be hammering that home a little bit more yeah. now that that is how it's been i've been measured. hammering that home for a couple of months and so, people you get i'm not going to get i don't think we should really get into covid but this is a very very quick bit of maths back in the day these are really rough figures back in the day we were hearing oh there's a thousand cases and 30 people are dying and now there's seven thousand cases a day and 30 people are dying so if seven times the number of people are being tested, seven times the number of people are probably going to be found positive, I'm guessing, as mm -hmm. a rough, yeah. you know. So therefore, if it is someone who's had COVID in the last 28 days, there'll be seven times more people than before having COVID, but there's been no changes in the deaths. Mm. So that should be viewed as a positive. Mm -hmm. Because if it's there as you, right? there should be more deaths. The Based fact on that, that yeah. the way it's reported, yeah. Just on the fact that it's reported within 28 days. So this doesn't have any bearing on whether COVID is the killer or how, how bad it is. But based on what you said, which is the government's own mm. words, yeah. someone who's had a positive COVID test within the 28 days prior to death, then if the numbers of deaths are saying the same, we're making great, great progress. Yeah, you think so. So that should be cause for celebration. Mm. But So you basically had a morning just of... Yourself, pottering, 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 yeah. Or gander flanking, as my dad would say. Gander flanking, mm. okay. Nice word, right? Yeah. Is that a it's Litchfield legit. type thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where it came from. No. I just, uh, it's a nice word, but it means the same thing. Okay. I was, I was accosted mm -hmm. in Costa. Okay. So, do you know, after last week, mm. um, or after last, last episode, I said that I enjoyed having coffee with Joe, setting my Saturday up right having a nice coffee, yep. a nice chat. So I thought I'd do the same this week. So Sarah and I went out for coffee and mm -hmm. and we've done what we've done for probably the last couple of months since Costa has been open. And we walked in, didn't, we didn't have our masks on. We walked in, hardly anyone in there, yeah. walked up to the counter, probably, you know, two, there's another person in, in the queue, ordered, then went and sat down. We did all the, the hand sanitizing and, and uh, track and trace yeah. on the app. Yeah. Then we sat down. <laughs> And I didn't notice, but there's a woman behind me who was giving Sarah the evils for most of most mm -hmm. of the time they were there. Um, so we've been sat down five minutes, and this woman came up and went, um, she's got a mask on. Mm -hmm. so it looks like she's just about to leave. She said, excuse me, are you exempt from wearing masks? And I went, no. She said, well, thanks for coming in and putting us all at risk. Mm -hmm. I said, excuse me? She said, you know, I've been, I've been shielding my mum for the last few months, and you know, you just come in and put her at risk. You put me at risk. Was her mum there? Or was yeah, it? she was sat yeah. down, just getting up, I think, putting the mask on. I said, well, I'm eating. And she said, well, I hope you choke on it. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> Bit taken aback. Did, and, did uh, she take her, I'm sorry, just asking as we go along, did mm. she take her mask off when she ate or did she just sort of she, use yeah. it as a filter? <laughs> yeah. she, she, had, so, she had a liquidized <laughs> panini. <laughs> That she forced straw, through. Yeah, just a straw. And yeah, yeah, I believe, yeah, they were just yeah. leaving, so they must have put their mask back on. Okay. And she thought she'd come over and before she left, have a little little pop at me. Mm. Uh, so she said, I hope you choke on it. And I said, well, you know. I hope I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you came you did, you came in you came in without a mask on. Yeah. I said, yeah. I said, well, I was, you know, keeping my distance and so it's okay. You know, I must admit, I forgot to put it on. I've been doing it for the last few weeks, not going in there, not putting it on. Mm -hmm. And while we're in there, people were coming in with without, there was a mix, doesn't make yeah. it wrong you know, no, 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 no. or right um so i guess by the letter of the law i'm in the wrong for not having put it on ordering it and then once i sat down i can then take it off yeah but i was making a judgment mm -hmm. that very empty costa and i was miles away from her um i think at some point she says well i hope you get covid i was like so okay that's great and i said well you're actually putting yourself at risk now by getting closer to me yeah yeah I, I, i've been you know keeping my distance and that was it. And that, she kind of trotted off and I tried to kill her with kindness saying, have a nice day. And it's lovely yeah. talking to her, you know, and that just put completely put us on a different, yeah. different note for the yeah. rest of the, no, I can understand. we've that. kind of been talking about it all the way home. And that's the first time anything like that's kind of happened. Hmm. 
But if she'd gone in there on Thursday when the Costa staff weren't wearing masks, would she have challenged them? That's right. Um, Yeah, we were talking about the scenarios. And if you You had choked and she knew how to do the Heimlich (laughs) manoeuvre... Would she have rescued me? (laughs) Well, she wouldn't have got that close and she'd wished you dead anyway. Well, I think there's a couple of things. I I wouldn't have minded having a conversation with her. No. Tell me the reasons why you're not wearing a mask because I'm interested. Yeah. Okay, Yeah. yeah, I'll have a conversation. But just to kind of, you know, wish, you know, wish me unwell... Mm-hmm. It was just a really weird way of doing it. And yeah. Also, then you know, lots of things spring to mind. Like, okay, if you're so worried, which clearly you are, why are you here with your mum, who is probably also worried? Mm. For yes. starters, yeah, Costa had, wouldn't you, be the obvious point to take. There's four or five a people person. working at Costa with masks on, yeah. or handling her cups and cutlery, yeah, yeah, without gloves, yeah. So she's more like to pick something up off, off contact, yeah, off surfaces. Like I said, I wouldn't mind having a conversation explaining why I didn't. Probably the biggest reason, I just forgot. Mm-hmm. But I had my mask in my pocket, so it wasn't really any reason. But I felt comfortable and I wasn't in anybody's face. So just the fact she had to come over and basically ruin my day yeah, yeah, was, was probably the, the most upsetting part of it. If I was someone who was maybe a bit more fragile or yeah. a bit built up to come out, you know, I'd been stuck inside for so long. Or someone up. who was more aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And punched her. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can. Yeah, oh, it's like I, right. I, I mean, wouldn't just. Why would you make someone feel so, sh- you know, so shit about themselves and so yeah. small? Yeah. And what's it going to achieve? What's it trying to achieve? And I understand she's probably upset and angry at the whole thing. And yeah, yeah. But part of me is, don't come out if you're that worried. You know, yeah. Don't ruin my day. If I came in here and I was shouting and getting in, you know, people's faces and standing, you know, half a meter away. And if you had what? been medically exempt, firstly, obviously, it'd be none of her problems. But I think, I think one of the things and I might be wrong on this, on the medical exemption is things like people that have a fear of claustrophobia. Yeah, anxiety. Yeah, it isn't. Asthma. Yeah, so for her to then... It's not all physical conditions. Yeah. It could be mental conditions yeah. as well. Yeah, it's like disabled parking spaces, isn't it? You yeah. don't necessarily have to have a, oh, you know, an observable physical disability. So she didn't really want to have the discussion. I didn't want to get into, okay, I don't have any officially any any conditions to be exempt from, but do I want, then do I have to have a doctor's note for that? Yeah. I just might be a fragile mind and I feel really uncomfortable wearing it. But yeah. you didn't even get to the point to ask me or even want to start a dialogue with me. You just wanted to go in and tell me, I mean, you know, wish you choked on my on my bacon yeah. sandwich. Yeah, it was just really upsetting and disappointing. And, no, that and, is um, sad. I spoke to someone on Twitter about something and was saying that the natural conclusion of this is that we will continue to wear masks forever because if it protects, not saying whether it does or it doesn't, if our government say masks protect... The flu season's coming on, which is an airborne virus. Then why would you stop wearing a mask? Yeah. So therefore, that would be part of everyday life. Yeah. If there's viruses out there, then you can't justify not wearing the mask if you believe that the mask is protecting yeah. you. So we are in that position now. Whether that it's mandate a could be worse, a permanent, yeah. permanent fixture, and then that becomes Orwellian, doesn't it? Yep, absolutely. Anyway, bum yeah. me right out. I would have given you a hug earlier if I'd known. Well, not a hug, virtual hug. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, just going on to bookmarks. Um, it's been an odd week of coincidences. We're talking about coincidences oh, yeah. in the yeah. last one. Um, I had a little one in in the week where I dreamt of being on a boat with dolphins swimming under. I can't, normally can't remember my dreams. Mm-hmm. So I'm surprised I remembered this one. But been on a boat, just, you know, dolphins under the boat swimming along. And then later on that day in the evening, Sir came over and, and said, oh, one of our friends has just sent me this. Her husband's working out in the Isle of Skye. He's gone out on the boat. Right. And it was almost, I was watching it. And it was almost playing my dream back. In and this was of, the following day? No, the same. The, the, the day you woke yeah, up the from the woke, dream? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. And I think that's when we were talking last week about some things. If you looked into it, there is going to be an element of it happening. But that doesn't yeah. seem a, an obvious. In fact, on dolphins, and I'm not mm. going to discuss it now. But, you know, despite their smiley faces and everyone goes there intelligent and they love people. Yeah. You just have a Google search about sexual activities of male dolphins. It's horrific. Oh, that. Yeah. yeah. If you love, love dolphins, then don't, don't do really. that search. Okay. If you're some of the people that we hang around with, they'll probably be there now. <laughs> probably on our <laughs> clicking away within about 20 yeah. minutes, right? <laughs> with your face on the dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bad Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the other thing that this is probably the, the freakiest one. I mean, you could argue that oh, it's a dreams dog, you know. Yeah. But our last two episodes mm-hmm. were exactly the same length of time to the second. Okay. And bearing in mind, we don't have any idea, have we? 
Not really. No, we no. don't. We keep an eye on the time, but we... Do we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. He says, glancing yeah. at the time and yeah. thinking he should move on. But to the second, it was a bit freaky. Yeah. Mine, I, I've had several. Um, one, I won't, one I won't mention because I haven't asked the person's permission, but it was... <laughs> yeah, here I am. I've got a brilliant coincidence, you've, you've but had, I, I had can't to... share it. <laughs> the, so the there's one. one. There's the second one you can't share. <laughs> there's a, the Dolphins second, and this. Yeah. Uh, the sec- yeah this is going to be a great podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say anything, <laughs> but I'll say in a deep voice. Um, no, the other thing was the Top Flight Time Machine, the podcast that, that, that I have a slight addiction to. Mm-hmm. Um, after we'd done our podcast last week on the Sunday, I'd gone for a long walk, was listening to it, and they were discussing... Um, doing the podcast naked right like yeah exactly as we as discussed we did, yeah maybe it's just a common thing in the podcast world maybe we'll get used to it when we go to the convention they for, our, for our awards <laughs> yeah best newcomers yeah maybe they listen you know don't you don't know no you don't know that's true i'm pretty sure they don't but nice thought mm. um so yeah there are a lot and i think yeah i had one too i, I need it, to check with people but is it that thing is it that kind of scenario where you know you you, you buy a new car you, you think it's a car that you you know not many people have yeah and then all you see literally the day you buy that car is that car and mm-hmm. suddenly they're every, you know so one of those things are you you looking you, for yeah, it it's that kind way. of positive thought isn't yeah, it yeah yeah if you want something to happen if you visualize it enough and think about it enough are you then on the you know are you then going to see more of it because you're looking out for it yeah possible but not with the dolphins the dolphins <laughs> that's a good story <laughs> thank you uh, a quick apology. We're going to do apologies because we're being so perfect, but we've, mm. we've 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 um we've got one. I've got an apology f- for you because you did a really funny joke and I didn't I didn't laugh as when hard. When you say as really <laughs> funny, <laughs> it was you kind of did a joke about how small are the audiences of, of my band. When I talk oh, about right. the band, you made a quip. Yeah, it got it got um, noticed by a client. Oh, it did. Yeah, it was very good. That. I was just one, one of those things where I was thinking about again, thinking about the thing I was going to say next, and, trees, and yeah. didn't give. But it was very, very funny. Good. You're a very you. funny man. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an apology as well for for language. We had a little. We had our first business meeting yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Just for people on Instagram, and just an apolo- If we're doing apologies to mm. craft the egg, lovely meal. Your photograph didn't do it justice. Well, look, you, I explained why. I know, but I did no that. one eats their food like that. There's got to be what? some sense of order. No, but that's the thing. What's the point in having Instagram full of, you know, untouched plates of food? I mean, it's not how we live, is it? It's not how we... It's what people want to see. It's and not, you didn't though, filter it. We are it. about... You didn't do, <laughs> that's, that's the you didn't do a soundtrack of... <laughs> for it. It was just a photograph of food. Ridiculous. That would go against what we're about. Okay. Wouldn't it? In, in, yeah. in every We're way. We're raw and uncut. We are. And I just thought, well, that's just, as I said, wabby-sabby. Exactly. Yeah, my apology was around language. And um, I'm not going to do a big apology because I'm not particularly woke and not going to be particularly dictated to by various things. But I'm, I'm aware <laughs> that sometimes my use of girls, ladies, women, men, boys, is sometimes just a little bit mixed. And I know one oh, or two okay. people... One or two people have views on this, which I which I think I actually agree with. So that's just a little okay before someone. You're writes saying it. you're very aware of it. I'm so aware of it, and it's just something that is it's one of those things that is never meant in a negative way. But mm. somebody, if somebody gets a ne- negative con- connotation, it's far easier for me to change because I don't mind changing. Sure. Rather than me go, nothing meant I'll do what anyway. I want. It doesn't sure. make any difference to my life, and it makes that person a bit happier. Mm-hmm. Peace and love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the generation gap. Um, I got a bit confused because I was, you know, listening back to it. Again. It's not ten; it can't be a generation of ten years. Not everyone's ten years old or younger than yeah. their, you know, older or younger family. But um, going back, clarification. On, yeah, yeah, in case anyone thought we were saying. Yeah, in a nutshell, I was saying, was 10 I, years, I was saying not... ten years probably makes a difference. Yes, and having seen your um, top one hundred playlist, mm-hmm. we have very very little in common musically. Yeah, um, I mean, I have taste, and you don't. They're very divergent. <laughs> They're very divergent. I haven't heard. You haven't. You haven't done yours yet. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But, um, Every time I put yours on, Wargasm comes on by L Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't, know. I don't know if it's like it's a good one to it's a good one to start off with. Okay. It's not even the first song in there, so I don't know why it's picking you just that. on you, shuffle. Ooh, that's, that one comes out. Yeah, two in, three in a row. It's come out on okay. that. Okay. Interesting. Um, so not truly random then. No. But I, mean, I guess computers can't be truly random either, can they? They have to determine what they think is random, so therefore can't be random. Again, this is something I'd... There, there's okay. probably some... To be random, you have to have a plan. Computers have to... They have to be programmed to be random, so therefore yes. can't be ran, truly yes. random, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. I could be 
this is something I'm going to have to look up and put in the book. I can marks, see what but, you're saying. Um, algorithms in it. In that, yeah. Uh, and I didn't have anything. Um, I talked a little bit about coffee and the benefits, and I and I didn't have the the stats to hand, so I just wanted to do, do a quick rundown because mm-hmm. we're drinking coffee now, yeah. and um, we love our coffee. You do. And um, I just went back and found mm. um, some benefits of coffee, which I thought were quite interesting. It might kind of lead on to some of your little bits and mm-hmm. bobs later on. And I know you're a fan of coffee, being a yeah a I pre-workout. Use pre-workout. Well, caffeine. Most pre-workouts have a stimulant in. That's the mm. whole point of being a pre-workout. And caffeine is quite often the stimulant mm. that's used. So. so the first one, um, coffee can improve energy levels and make you smarter. Mm-hmm. Caffeine blocks uh, an inhibitory neurotransmitter in your brain, which causes a stimulant effect. This improves energy levels, mood, and various aspects of brain function. It can help you burn fat. Several studies have shown that caffeine can increase fat burning and boost your metabolic rate. Okay. I'm just going to come in on that. Please do. A fat burner per se does well. God, this is going to cause this is going to cause a massive controversy. Good. You can go into <laughs> Holland and Barrett when you go oh, find your skinny coffee. <laughs> yeah. oh. I've, I've got a bee in my bonnet. Uh, there go my shares. Bee in my Barrett, and um, <laughs> and you can buy miracle fat burners. Mm. Fat burning per se, if it was that easy that you could literally burn oh, fat, be, we'd, we'd all be, all be on, on it. it. Yeah. The bit that you then said to clarify is by raising the bet- metabolic rate. So there is that element of a fat burner works by increasing your metabolic rate, i.e. your activity, yeah. and therefore you burn more fat and calories because you're doing more stuff. something, more yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but I think it's just that careful bit about fat burners. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, it can drastically improve physical performance. So caffeine can increase adrenaline levels. Mm-hmm. and release fatty acids from your fat tissues. It also leads to significant improvements in physical performance. It does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was we just gonna... looking up the word when at the beginning you were saying, when I did a little bit of research, there's something called... And again, we're going to have to put out this warning. One of the things we're going to come to later We can is... put one at the beginning. Sorry? We can, we can put a health warning at the okay. beginning or some kind of, All right. you know... So the, the health warning, I think, on anything we say in the next two is based on researched facts, but there's always going to be another side to the story. Of course. Um, and so, yeah, what is true? Do you know what I mean? There's two opinions on, on of course. everything. Yes. Um, but I just think it's the bit around, the, the thing that I read about was that um, something called adenosine, A-D-E-N-O-S-I-N-E, um, that is produced from physical work and exercise. And what the caffeine in the coffee does is block that. So it's basically mm. the stuff that makes you sleepy. Caffeine comes in and stops that being transmitted to the brain. So yeah. it takes away sleepiness. Whereas we always see coffee as a sort of proactive, giving you a buzz. Yeah. I mean, it does, but that's one yeah, of the other features. You're staying awake because you're wired from it, but it's yeah. actually not it's, that. Yeah, it's taking away the sleepy bit. Yeah. Um, it contains essential nutrients. Coffee contains several important nutrients, including riboflavin, pantothenic acid, mm-hmm. uh, manganese, potassium, magnesium, and niacin. Going to be talking about potassium soon. Excellent. Uh, Elsa says it may, I can put the links up to where I'm getting this. Um, so it may lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. Several observation studies show that coffee drinkers have a much lower risk of type 2 diabetes, a serious condition that affects millions of people worldwide. And the last one was may protect you from Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Coffee drinkers have a much lower risk of getting Alzheimer's, uh, which is a leading cause of dementia worldwide. I mean, some of those are observational studies. Of course. But this, again, will come up later about the value of some observational studies. Moving into work-life ballet, we'd already touched on music. Mm -hmm. Um, And you've been listening to my top 100. Yeah. um, Yeah. Which has been a... I've kind of dipped back into it again. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's always room for refinement in these things. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it takes some time to do, but you said you're going to have a look and see yeah, you do one. Yeah, going to have a look. I think they're quite good. I was thinking about it today. I think they're really good to kind of re-engage. So talking about moods and passion and listening to music yeah. and kind of, yeah. you know, how it makes you feel and how sometimes you can, you want to listen to it and sometimes you just can't, even though mm-hmm. you adore the, you know, some of the songs and they normally make you feel good. You just can't listen to some stuff. But I think it's it's been really good for me. So I had, I think the week before we were talking that I couldn't listen to anything. Yeah. And then, I kind of got re-engaged with it this 
this week and found and went back to some records that I hadn't listened to for a while. Mm -hmm. And even there were some records that weren't on some of the streaming service I was listening to, which are now. Yeah. And I kind of started listening to them again and just had a whole flood of, I don't know what, just again, emotions and kind of feelings and almost to the point of there's one song that I hadn't listened to for probably about 10 years that yeah. almost made me cry. Yeah. And I was like, what, where's this? And I just yeah. couldn't control that feeling. So again, it's um, almost kind of went exactly the opposite direction. Of, yeah, of, of, of what we've being, been speaking. Uh, yeah, me being numb to it to yeah. suddenly me being highly and kind of engaged and, and um, emotive about it, which was pretty pretty overwhelming actually yeah. Almost, yeah. so that's quite surprising but kind of it started to kind of reignite okay um, well hopefully mine thing. will do the same for me i put on an insta story about will bell william bell yeah I listened, black soul I, singer yeah i did listen I, on the way home and i've never heard i'd never heard of him but you know the songs no all oh, right and I, I haven't looked him up i just i literally hit shuffle when you yeah i came out of work put it straight on and i listened to about four or five songs which sounded amazing some of them sounded like they're straight out of the 60s and like so i can't i haven't because i haven't looked him up i can't work out how, how old he it, is is it um because some stuff sounded then suddenly mod sounded really modern sounded very stacks am i right the genre not the genre so say but um stacks was a sound wasn't it a soul sound stax right. you're looking at me not, vaguely. No, i'm not familiar i've heard okay. i'm not really familiar i'm not I'm a, the huge muso one you know, okay but um but they were great and his voice is great the, i mean the the, the I think I, some of the, the production sounds a bit, some of it sounded like it was very 60s and then some sounded like it was made yesterday and I was going yeah. to work out whether he's been around for 40, 50 years or whether he's been around for 10. I really couldn't tell. Yeah, but. no, I think he's been around quite a while. It was, um, I mean, it was a great photograph I put on Instagram. He's got a great face mm, mm. Um, and a great voice. Yeah. And one of the songs was called Happy and it was a, it was a good tune. But yeah, it was yeah. just... It was good. Yeah, and one of my clients actually... I think Kleena Kelly. I, I meant to ask you if Kleena Kelly's okay. I'm guessing it is. I'm guessing it is. Well, Kleena Kelly is going to use, put him into her playlist. We did the whole workout to William Bell when I trained her this right. week. And is she okay with being called Kleena Kelly? That's what I'm saying. I She's think become a brand now within, yeah. within our. I think it's nice, isn't it? It's not meant in any. No, I mean she's not a cleaner. I don't know. Is she a cleaner? No, by trade. No. Okay. But um, yeah. No, I think she. I think she gets the gets the reference but really interesting that i played it and it made enough of an impression for her to then mm. text me and going that's going on my playlist yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah william bell okay i'm gonna get into that um can you um i mean obviously you trained to but you, can you uh got into this conversation this week about some people listening to our podcast and some can work along to the spoken word mm -hmm. and some can't now i can i can listen to i can't listen to a podcast and work no yeah i can listen to radio and work and yeah. i think that's main it's probably the obvious fact that i don't really have to engage or you too much with the radio yeah because it's almost yeah. so fleeting and it's just almost background noise whereas you know if it feels with a podcast you have to invest well it is a conversation not, isn't it, yeah, it is. not, yeah and you're not getting i guess too much into anything across a whole whole day or a, or a series mm. of hours it's quite it's quite kind of concentrated but yeah but yeah some people have kind of been working along to it and they missed stuff and gone back to it and they were just talking about that and then there's some that got me on to thinking about the songs and there's quite a lot of songs i can there's some albums i can just literally play mm -hmm. beginning to end and there's mm -hmm. two um there's the charlatans telling stories and blink 182 is california beginning to end i mm -hmm. just keep i just literally keep playing them and i can be hugely productive yeah. listening to those some some albums i just can't yeah which i think is kind of weird yeah and they're quite very very different very different albums but and there's some i just can't listen to which i find it find really odd i don't know what what it is about that but um it's just made me the think, same in that I, yeah i'm totally the same i was listening to podcasts that we're going to reference a couple of in this one and maybe in the next podcast and it will be on the um you will provide the reference for people. Yeah. But um, I was finding I was hitting, you know, the 15 second back button. I kept hitting okay, that yeah, and yeah. saying, I haven't quite got that point. I wanted to grab that point. Yeah. Whereas if it was a song, you just go, well, I'll just, yeah. I'll just pick it up. So yeah, yeah I agree yeah. with you with that on the podcast. It's definitely, but just going back to, to music, I remember when I did my A-levels, um, I wasn't exactly spoiled as a child. So at the age of 16, I had three LPs that I bought All right. um, and they were basically what was ever was in the, the bargain basement at um, John Menzies. Uh, yeah. It's like what WH Smith sort yeah. of took over. and still about, are they Menzies? Are they? Some, I don't know. I can't remember seeing Maybe one. not shops, but I think they still exist as a. What's well, still a name? A distributor or something. Okay. 
Anyway. Um, did you have something? So just to get, because I was kind of, I picture you like you and your Tim Bath with all your neighbors. Yeah. I picture you. So do you, because you, you didn't come from a, a musical family in terms of, I guess, well, there weren't musicians for no. one and didn't play much music. So was there anything no. to play the LPs on? Did you have to go and play them with someone else? It was a very, to? very, it was like your traditional um, pie record player, I think, where you oh, put okay. a 2P on the, you know, to keep it from jumping on the okay. needle sort of thing. Oh, so yeah, right, very, right. very basic. Okay. So the three were 24 Karat Purple from Deep Purple. I don't like that music, mm. but I only had okay. three LPs. Rumours from Fleetwood Mac, oh. which I think is value. <laughs> yeah. And Germ-Free Adolescence by X-Ray Specs. Right. And so quite a... It can be three different genres, really. Three different can... genres, three different ages. Wow. Um, but yeah, just sort of had those on a loop. Mm. But yeah. X-Ray Specs, could just listen. see. That's I missed kick. it. We missed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On last you, mentioned, week. you mentioned that this week. I thought, hold on, it's another another link. Yeah. Another coincidence. One of the lines or in not. their lyrics is, brush your teeth the SR way, and they had to blank out SR when they're on top of the pops because that's the name of toothpaste, and it's just like, oh, okay, right. we're punks, we're anarchists, <laughs> but we won't Wait. say a brand on top of the pops because we've been told not to. Yeah. Polly Styrene was the lead singer. Great name. Right. Miss Styrene? Yeah. Okay, birth name or stage no, name? No, I think I'm it's guessing. stage name. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I like those things to be real, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What's your real name? That is my real name. Yeah. <laughs> I was born. I was born to do this. Uh, we're into your section now. And I'm talking over it again because you haven't got your headphones in. But... I can hear it squeaking out of the okay. headphones. <laughs> so, we're into drop and give me twenty. Okay. You've got a photo to show me. We were we were kind of teasing our. Are we doing our, the photo first? Is that where we're going? Well, I've been dying to see it. You've been teasing it all week. Okay, I've sent you the link. Have a look. I'm happy to send. It. I'm not. Well, people don't want to see this, but I'll send the link. It's a piece of art. It isn't. I think I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Being kind of uh, head of editorial. Okay. You see, you sent it to me on WhatsApp. Have you? Yeah. That's on the internet. You are on the internet naked. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just thought you were going to send me a. Like a private version. What have you sent me? Show me what you, what I've shown you. Yeah, those are all bodies. Zoom in. Okay, so I'm going to just descri- because I thought I was do, gonna... do a description for the dis- listener. So um, initially, it looked like a rainbow, and then it looked like a lot of dead fish uh, on the oh, beach. Uh, what? No. What? A, no, seriously. No. What are you asking me? What it? No, I'm going to just tell you. Was it? Was that what it was meant to be? Dead it's, fish. It's on um, coincidence. <laughs> This better be one well, because we haven't sound, had a decent one like, yet. This sounds like the <laughs> the Chuckle Brothers on acid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's to it's a physical manifestation of the of a very big oil spill in Canada. Okay, so I got it right. Yeah, cool. that's what the I was gonna that's say, what the black of... that's what the black is. Okay, right. Okay. Do you want do you want to describe for the listeners because I think well, we I might to. we might have lost one of them. <laughs> I was trying to. Okay. So it, it initially looked like a rainbow. So it's got um kind of four. They look like um layers of sediment. Okay. Okay. I'm going to we're going to have to put this. You can put this out. There's nothing wrong with that. No, no. It's very arty. I didn't realize it was going to be arty. So it's like kind of it's, it's basically bodies on the ground which I thought were fish, but they're painted in different colors. Uh kind of blue and they've got black and then pink and yellow at the bottom. Um and I can't, I don't know if I can zoom in on this or not. Um, I'm light blue, by the way. But well, I'm not going to spot you, am I? In if that? if you zoom hundreds, in, you could, maybe, you could maybe describe how we're lying. Because okay, if you yeah. zoom in, that then becomes little less. I arty. mean, there's got to be like three, four hundred bodies on there. Yeah, all, I would say. All fully painted. Yeah. I mean, you can't be fully painted. No, you, you are fully painted. Oh. So it's only one side of you will be painted. No, all of you is painted. You, should, you can't paint bodies, you'd all die. No, well, you, we didn't. You, you had to have some skin that's... No. What? You can see the picture. If someone had skin, he chucked them out the photo. There is no skin showing on that picture. So do you remember the James Bond film? Which Gold... one? Paint I'm me think... and I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> what, me? Paint me and I'll <laughs> Paint your wagon. No. You've been very defensive about this photo. I know you're in it, but no one, no one would know. Anyway, gold, uh, Goldfinger. I'm thinking it's Goldfinger because okay. there's a girl that got painted gold. Okay. I always heard that they had to leave a little bit of, they properly painted her, but they had to leave a little bit of skin okay. so her skin could breathe, otherwise she'd die. So you can't paint people. You can't do it without... Just zoom in on that. God, this is going to be well, our first... Fuzzy. Blooming... It's, not, it's not very high, but you know me, I'm all, all right, about I'll bring fidelity. the actual photo then. Do you, want, do you want the background to it? You finished describing it, so oh, it's well, naked try... bodies. Oh, no, there's a... 
Okay, so there's no good bodies. You're all painted. But um, you're all kind of lying. Worth... You're all kind of lying on each other. There is a better one here, but ever... there's pretty. You got heads in people's yes. private parts. Yes. I mean, it's, it couldn't be. It's basically upside choice... down oral sex, isn't it? Yeah, or the human centipede, or <laughs> yeah. that kind of. Uh, you know, is... I'm not putting that up on the internet. No a picture of that. Okay, I'm going to have to put some. Are you shocked up for now? That. No, I'm not bit. shocked. It's just, well, I'm, the only shock is... You, it is quite intrusive that you've got your head in somebody else's... In someone else's privates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it was very arty. It must have taken quite a lot of yeah. art direction, so fair play. He did, he did. It, it wasn't what I was expecting. I thought he was going to be... Me prancing in a field. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wild I, flat, I had maybe. no idea, but um, yeah, I wanted, I wouldn't, I'd never spot you in there. Okay. So just very, very quickly, so now we've given that vivid descri- description, I mean, yeah, probably we don't, so even need to, we don't even need to know the background. Basically, Big Chill Festival, festival up in Herefordshire, 2010, and a guy called uh, Spencer Tunick is, um, well, basically he's a photographer and his, his specialism is mass naked um, photo shoots. The highest he's done in terms of volume was Mexico City, mm-hmm. um, 18,000 naked people in the shoot the right. photos of that are amazing right. um he also did red square in moscow which is like to get away with that well they all had to run as soon as they'd oh, done it right, it was right, like yeah. literally all soldiers all painted out as guns. well no this was his first ever painted first and oh, last so you know me just as well after the 400 deaths of this one he turned back to <laughs> <laughs> yeah you were the only one that survived yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of my bum cheeks was left <laughs> <laughs> So oh. basically, they Dude. put up a note and said, "If you want to take play, part in this, this was at the festival. Be at this field at six o'clock." And we just all turned oh, up. There was no shortage of volunteers. there was no shortage, and um, I think the whole process, without without just being flippant, the whole process was enlightening. And one of the things I think we wanted to refer to, or I wanted to refer to, was this whole stuff around body image and mm. this whole thing about confidence. And when we were saying last week, we do this naked. And you were going, I don't think I will. Yeah. Although I was joking, there was that element of why have we got to the I position? I could see you had a glint in your eye. You thought, <laughs> oh. Of anticipation. But it was like, why have we got to this position that that, that should make us feel mm. uncomfortable? And I know a lot's been talked about body image and how social media is, you know. But it just made me think, going back to this particular um, photograph, this installation, was the people that were there were... There was such a wide, diverse... Um, there was one woman there who um, I think had probably lost, I don't know, 10, 15 stone, and your body loses the elasticity, so the sure, skin becomes sure. stretched. Mm-hmm. And it would be the sort of thing where you, you you would probably worry if you had that situation that you were going to be judged. Sure. Um, and the interesting thing about one of the people there, which I thought was great, was that um, the woman was white and her husband was black, and you could choose what colour... Uh, you wanted to paint okay and she chose to paint herself black and paint her husband yellow oh. and that was a really interesting mm. situation to see that sort of change mm. but there's a couple of other interesting things that came out of it one was yeah you had to paint yourself and then there was i can't say this without it sounding strange there was a group of women who a bit like so they reached the bits that you couldn't reach right was there men as well there was the only old, women doing the doing touching the... up bits of paint. Okay. So basically, you would paint yourself. How you many would... times did you go back round? <laughs> I just kept rubbing it off. <laughs> I said, you got a wet wipe. Missed a bit. <laughs> um, Sorry. It was bound to disintegrate onto that, wasn't I'm, it? I'm, I'm, yeah, it was like I'm... your invisibility thing with... Anyway. So yes. we painted ourselves, these people. The guy who was doing it, literally, if you had any skin showing, you were out of the photo. If you were anyone who was perving, you were out of the photo. He was on this massive crane and he would literally, we had security there and he would go, there's a blue there looking at people's bits, get rid of him and literally what? chuck him off. Yeah, well, there were well, people you, there. You if, can't help but I mean, there's a sea of people. You can't yeah, but you can be, at... there's probably signs that you're maybe, Well, you know, I mean, if he's got his eye on one person out of 400, then well, some of the, some of the Unless people were being a bit naughty. Yeah, people were being a bit naughty. That's. I mean, you were at a festival, I guess there's a, you know. Yeah, there's probably a, a higher some... level of tolerance, but there were people there that maybe were just doing it to, yeah. to undermine it a bit. Okay, sure. So anyway, we painted ourselves, but the interesting thing, and I thought this was something I learned a lot from, we were on top of um, 
a grassy knoll <laughs> and he's in a crane with a megaphone and he said we can't piss about with this so mm. i'm going to count down from five lie down then no take all your clothes off standing up hold on a minute you had to you painted and then put your clothes back on. No, we're at the top of a hill, fully dressed, while right. he tells us what's happening. Okay, okay. The paint's at the bottom right? Okay, with sorry. the touch rubbers. I thought you were... Right. And so he said, right, no messing about. Strip, run down the hill. Okay. And the second that happened, everything went out the window in terms of embarrassment because everybody was in the same position. Yeah, sure. So you went down, you painted yourself. These women made sure that there was no skin showing. And if you look at that, because that's meant to be a representation of an oil slick mm -hmm. in the sea, yeah. you can see if there are bits of skin, it, it, it the artistic it. integrity sure. goes. Mm -hmm. But one of the things was, obviously the shoot took quite a long time and we had a couple of practices and I realized quite early on that he didn't want any grass showing. Grass. And... Uh, <laughs> For those hard of hearing. <laughs> and I, I realised the only way to ensure no grass was showing is that you had to be very close physical contact with the people around yeah, you. Yes, so you have to close your legs and make sure there's, yeah, you're touching up to yeah, the next person. Yeah. yeah, you have to nestle basically between that person's legs. I realised very quickly where I wanted to nestle and where I didn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there was a little bit. But the interesting thing for me about this was that after the whole thing had finished, and I really enjoyed the shoot, it was a great experience. I love the photo. Yeah, what was interesting afterwards was quite a lot of people didn't take the paint off. All right. Stayed around. But we stayed in groups. So the light blues hung around colours. together yeah. while the pinks were like, yeah, there's bloody pinks. Were like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was. It became really That's tribal. Yeah. And then a few people decided just to carry on. So went back into the festival. Like that, fully. Naked and, and painted. Mm. But somehow you felt a bit clothed with the paint. Yeah. So it did have a yeah. sort of, almost a bit like a morph suit in a way, but obviously everything's yeah. dangling with paint. But um, so no, I was, the, the point I'm getting, I'm, there is a serious point in this, is that firstly, it's easy and we've probably undermined our serious, <laughs> our serious <laughs> point do. by sort yeah. of being titillating. But the nudity itself was really liberating. The fact that nobody was judging everybody, everybody mm. was just doing as they were told and, you know, touching other people in that, that way would be seen as quite intimate but yeah. in the context of the photograph and the reason for it 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 all became mm -hmm. just became good really and yeah. um, i'm really proud yeah you know, the picture i've got is really good and it's, yeah, it's good. you know he's got like a worldwide reputation but i think it was that bit around the the one point i was going to say was at the early part when you've painted yourself and you walk up for this photograph mm -hmm. you could tell people were comparing there was blokes looking at other blokes and thinking yeah yeah he's got abs and I haven't, or he's mm. tall or he looks good, or I wish I'd chosen that color. Yeah. But as the time went on, you just became, you know, sort of a mass of humanity yeah, and it yeah, didn't matter. Yeah. And all the differences went out the window. Mm. So there was no judging at Especially all. It doesn't take long for that to happen. No, does it? no. And literally you don't, you really don't notice, but I think it's that bit in the first few minutes, you are very aware. And mm. if somebody is different, you, you, you start making sort of almost subconscious judgments, not good mm. or bad, but Oh, and obviously it helps has... that there's you know, the more there are the the better it is there's almost there's too much to compute yeah there's, there's and it was so diverse people's bodies thing. are yeah. so diverse so many... i'm not going to go like get your kit off but it was enlightening and i think <laughs> i think it's the one thing i think I, if i could change everything with the clients i work with it's that bit around body confidence and positivity and just really not worrying yeah about stuff but, but everyone does yeah. And I think it's getting worse, I think. I never, until I started working with you on this, I never really understood how good it feels to either wear a piece of clothing you either couldn't physically didn't fit or whatever yeah. or it just looked too bad. But then I, and I didn't realise how much I was wearing things to hide how I looked. Yeah, yeah. And I thought it, you know, I didn't understand, I thought it'd be kind of vain and not something that I'd be comfortable with. But suddenly when you kind of go, I'm, I'm buying a size small in t-shirt and, mm -hmm. and I can wear them and I don't feel embarrassed back you know yeah and it feels good when you put it on yeah I, yeah and almost to the point of you you almost don't think about it mm -hmm. and how kind of liberating that can be yeah i think that happens in in anyone's journey i guess mm -hmm. body journey whatever you want to call it yeah you know whether there's big gains or small gains people are going to get that and i never got that before mm -hmm. because i never worked on myself yeah yeah and then you start to do that and you, and you just i don't know i can't explain it, the feeling you get it's not about going out showing off it's just it's just in, it's totally in, inward. And, and how good you can feel yeah. by just wearing a 
t-shirt's a bit tighter, a bit smaller. And it's not about how you look to anyone else. I mean, that, that has to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. There has to be. I don't, you know, people go, I'm just doing it to myself. Well, you, you're not because you just stay inside and wear it. Yeah. You go out, you yeah. want to... You want to feel good, and if and if you can feel good outside, you know, in front of other people, yeah, that's another level, isn't it? And I think clothing is. I had this discussion with um, a client on Thursday who said that he'd made, I think, the third new hole in his belt, <laughs> You're right. um, but hadn't lost weight, and it's that bit around the scales aren't important. Yeah. If if you, yeah, your body shape is becoming changed, what yeah. you want, yeah. then the numbers don't matter. Yeah. Um, and another another person that I was training sent sent a picture, very much like you were saying, just like these trousers look good on me yeah. you know not not i've lost half a stone or not look at me it's just yeah i know i feel good wearing these trousers i think mm. clothes are a really good indicator and i think what you're yeah. saying is it's tempting to use clothes as camouflage yeah absolutely so your body shape doesn't be- it just becomes yeah. hidden at all times and i didn't realize it yeah i mean why would i if there's not something else to to compare it against sure. I, I wouldn't even know what that feels like and then that feeling becomes really addictive yeah and you can see why some people go the opposite way because it can get a bit, you know, you can pretty easily get obsessive. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I just think it's really kind of empowering and mm-hmm. I'd never felt it until fairly recently. So mm. do you want to talk about sarcopenia? I do. I do. I was listening back to try and get our viewing figures, our listening figures up um, to, <laughs> I think this is either one or two, wasn't it? When we first mentioned this. Yes. Um, a couple of people said it's really interesting about losing, losing muscle mass and strength training and, yeah. Just, I guess, training and age. And, yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I don't want to be pseudoscientist. I don't want to start setting loads of hairs running and people going, I don't understand what that means. So what I'm going to do is just literally a couple of lines. And like we said before, there's going to be arguments either side or people could say, well, you've forgotten to say this. This isn't meant to be. This is meant to just start a conversation. So sarcopenia is a muscle disorder. Um in terms that it's an impairment of physical function combined with a loss of muscle mass. So it is just that. You lose your muscle. Um, It starts in your fourth decade. Um, So it's a loss in skeletal muscle mass. And there's a number of um, factors that cause it. So so moving less, lifting less, diet, other factors can have um, an impact on losing muscle mass. But one of the things I'd just like to focus on is that... um, there's a reduced sensitivity to the stimulus of protein. And I was thinking, what does that actually mean? One of the things that I read was that saying that as people get older, quite often their appetite, especially when you're getting 60s, 70s, Mm. quite often appetites go down. Mm. And you'll look at, this is a sweeping generalization, but quite a lot of older people go, I'll have a bit of toast or I'll have some cheese and crackers. Um, And so what happens is they have less protein and we've discussed the role of protein in repairing and building muscle. And so therefore you're getting this situation where your body is losing muscle mass because of your lifestyle, i.e. doing less because you're older. And then the stuff that would help regenerate and repair, you're not taking in. So it becomes this vicious circle. Um, By your eighth decade, you can have lost 50% of your, your muscle, your muscle mass. Um, The sort of factors that, 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 increase it uh, uh obesity definitely adds to the loss of muscle mass decline in activity as i mentioned um both in terms of physical activity and nutritional activity um one of the things that happens is there's a drop of um fast twitch um muscle fibers which is uh for the more explosive stuff you know for your sprinting and your yeah. weight so again we talked in in one or two about uh resistance training why, why isn't resistance training being pushed more um because it is the only thing that will increase your bone density but it's so bone density is lost as well as bone density gets lost the same way? basically during during life anyway if okay. you think about it, so one of the so things i guess about, we're all deteriorating because one thing in my head we, you know we're getting older <clears throat> we're essentially decaying <laughs> yes, Sorry to be so we are decaying. back to death again but we are there's the arrow of time and that's generally what yeah. what happens to us so is bone density and losing muscle a part just a part of you know what I mean, I understand if we don't do anything, muscles get lost, but yeah. they don't get, you know, they it's going to happen there. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If you it. get to a certain age, they're going to, they it's going to happen. So that has yeah. to be part of the aging yeah. process. But it can be reversed. Not, it can yes, be reversed. Sure. So the bit around the, why the bone density is that if you think of the two together, one of the things that's a major factor for older people is when they have a fall, that can often be yeah. a catalyst for, you know, almost, I don't mean the end, but in terms of, mm-hmm. you know, 
the frailty often leads to, to to fractures in bones because the bone density is less because they you know haven't been doing resistance training yeah. um and so yeah the two go hand in hand really and so the the angle i wanted to to, to look at this at very briefly was just sort of to ask the question why um i was thinking of all the things that become fashionable um like eating quinoa or <laughs> not using plastic straws or spending an hour a day on in, on instagram so all the things that are part of people's daily lives that become in waves of fashion uh -huh, yes sir. and they'll 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 then pass and something else will come sure. and we'll be told there's a new superfood or there's something else we've got to read or there's yeah. a new podcast yeah and i'm thinking but here's something that could actually mean your quality of life was going to be improved. Mm -hmm. The likelihood is that you would live longer and a better life because of better quality. Yeah. And it's being ignored and no one's telling us to do it. Mm -hmm. And the research on sarcopenia is very, very little, apart from knowing it exists. There right. isn't that much out there. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. This is like having a car that you really value mm -hmm. and going, I hope that rust doesn't eat away at it. And <laughs> looking every 10 years and going, yeah, it is. Yeah. Rather than going, well, if I get this welded, yeah. the car's going to last and it's going to be a nice car and it's going to yeah. be... You also referenced something the other, the other week about uh, it's just not something you do as you get older. In terms the of you know, Yeah. Of, yeah. Um, you know, some people don't get introduced to it at all. But, you know, and I'm seeing more because you're sharing more stuff with me that, you know, that age doesn't actually become a barrier at all. Yeah, maybe the fact you haven't done anything, then suddenly you take it up, it will take a bit longer. But if you if you do a little bit and, you know, the little and often and that kind of thing, yeah, that'd be a huge benefit. And, if it, it? and if, if it can reverse it, because it, why wouldn't you? Because you What's... look at it and you just go, it's just for people who want to look like that. Yes. And it's not. No. Is it? Which I think is a, when, when, when anyone talks or shows you anything to do with resistance rate or, or weight training, yeah, it's, it's massive people. Like you yeah. said, you know, it's yeah. not about getting bulky. It's, um. It's the, the, the simple, the functional stuff we've talked about, you know, getting in and out of bed easier, getting in and out of the shower bath, mm -hmm. getting on your bike, getting yeah. in and out of a car. Not making a noise when you desk. do it. And yeah, yeah. And that is, you know, 30s, 40s, you know, if you, it applies. It's not just, you know, get to 50 or 60 and that's what you're saying, isn't it? If yeah, you, yeah. If you get, well, into, I was, I was, get into the habit. I, I was you know, just thinking then of something, I was just looking at you then because I can remember one of the things, you used the word functional a couple of times and sometimes it's almost like a sort of fashionable word in weightlifting, like everything's functional in a way because if you're lifting something, you're doing a function. Yeah, but, yeah. but I know what you meant by functional because yeah. you used the example to me after training with me for a few months of like putting in the vans in the, uh, the drums in the back of the van was <laughs> yeah. easier. Yeah, well, but, but that's the thing that always stuck with me. You said we're going we're gonna to focus on the functional, but you explained it very early on saying yeah. it, it's the, and I joke about picking up socks and it not, yeah. and it not yeah. hurting on me, make, not making a noise. But yeah. But it is. It's just. It's amazing how much that 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 changes things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to read from this, just because I think it's this. Of of all the the um, articles that I read on this, we'll put this as a note. It's called exerciseright.com.au, so an Australian article. And if everything was written like this, and we were just given to this five minutes a day to read things like mm. this, our life would be better. Why aren't we taught about sarcopenia? Why do most of the people listening to this, I guess, not actually know it? Yeah. How far have we come as humans that we don't actually know that our body is deteriorating? Yeah. Or if we do know that, what, what we, we could do? do. Yeah. So I'm just going to read a couple of things out here. These are just, I'm just going to, they're just going to be truth bombs and we'll move on. So it's an age-related decline in muscle mass, three to five percent loss in muscle mass each decade from the age of thirty, and this is this is the amazing bit. We still aren't entirely sure what causes it, and we're going well. It's you're getting older, yeah. But well, I guess they're trying to find the one thing. It's, it's down to lots of things, yeah, isn't it? Um, what we do know is that this loss of muscle mass is often associated with frailty and loss of late strength in later life. Exactly what you said ultimately leads to falls, hip fractures, loss of independence, and premature death. If someone comes to you in your 40s and say, this is what could happen in your 70s, but if you do this, yeah. the chances of it happening are, are far reduced. You You'd be a mug not to do it. Yeah. Um, it's particularly evident in sort of 70 plus, and it says that quite often at risk, men and women at this age start to take on what they call a frail type appearance, struggling with daily tasks mm -hmm. like getting out of a chair, opening jars and bottles, becoming unstable. I and, think that's, sorry, that's a just point I really wanted to make. This isn't, you know... I, I absolutely wish I'd started this in my 30s. Okay, I've right. already talked about 
you know my barren years of, yeah. of physical act, yeah. of activity i just wish i knew about this like you said yeah. you know why wasn't it i did p8 p e g c s e none of this was mentioned you no. know it was it was all, rope, all the stuff climbing you, ropes and <laughs> handstands wasn't it yeah it, you know this is huge isn't it yeah it's huge so it says there's no medical or pharmaceutical treatment so yet again we, we've got one so we should all forget about it because <laughs> yeah. there isn't a well, pill well the interesting that... thing is there's no money so why should anybody actually be oh, no actively make... promoting this okay, no yeah. one makes any money interesting so that's why it isn't promoted i think mm. um the only known treatment which can both prevent and completely reverse it is resistance training which has been shown to regrow diminishing muscle individuals up to 101 years of old age um it's interesting it's called treatment mm -hmm. isn't it Phys moving and 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 phys keeping yourself physically fit yeah it's, it's doing it's what your body's a, meant to do like move yeah. I guess if we didn't have the lifestyle we have now, we'd be running after our food. Yeah, hunting and const mammoths. constantly on the move, wouldn't yeah. we? We'd be wrestling things and yeah. I don't know what we did. Take, in it. <laughs> yeah. So it says, by far the most potent stimulus to improve both muscle quality and quantity is high-intensity resistance training. That is lifting a weight that you can lift only six to eight times before fatigue. And you know from a training with me, this whole thing about overloading the muscles. So you break down muscle fibers, mm. you eat protein, that repairs the muscle fibers and you get bigger and you get stronger. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, there was a study in 1990 of, uh, in Sydney with nursing home residents aged between 86 and 96 were in an eight-week high-intensity intensity resistance training program. There was large increases in muscle strength, mm. an average of 10% increase in muscle mass, and one participant showed an increase of more than 40%. This translated to faster walking speeds, increase in balance, and some gave away their walking canes with no injuries or complications reported and a 98.8% session attendance rate. And you just sort of read all this and you go, "Yeah, <laughs> it's almost ridiculous that, you know, why aren't in nursing homes, instead of sitting watching Countdown, people given, and I know so, people are going to ring in and go, yeah. yes, they are, and they do yeah. little bits of gymnastics and they do some yoga, I'm not knocking any of that. But this is weights. You have to use resistance. Mm -hmm. So why isn't it, you know, why exactly your point? Why are children at, at school told, you know, it's fine running and it's fine skipping, and it's fine cycling and swimming, but you need to be lifting mm -hmm. weights at some stage in your life. Mm -hmm. So that was just a really no, whistle-stop tour. But it's just, I think it's that bit that you said last week about knowing our bodies. Why are we not doing something that could make life better and, you know, at very little cost? So... That's Amen. Uh, just a couple of things in our mailbag because we're running out of time. Some of the feedback was from Stu, left us uh, a voice, a nice voice recording. Yeah. Which is really great. That Thank, was excellent. Thanks, I enjoyed Stu. that. Thank um, you. Really, really, and um, from a mm. communications professional as well. I was, uh, mm -hmm. I was very honoured he spent the time yeah. to uh, give us that feedback. And some of it was about the length, and that's kind of been coming up at the length of our podcast. He said, yeah. trying to get, you he know, <laughs> keeping this down to an hour or so. But um, yeah, a few people kind of, you know, voluntarily have said, actually, I think it's okay how, you know, it been a, an hour or yeah. a bit longer than that. And um, so I guess the point, we're probably not going to worry about it too much, are we? No. I think <laughs> we just have one eye on the clock, yeah. in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got rather, a lot of eyes Rather than four, on. yeah. Yeah. Um, I, j I just feel... Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, and and so. we will have some at 30 and 40. And one of the things, and this is mm -hmm. going to be a business meeting on air, but very quickly, one of, the things, one of the things I was thinking about, which I've sort of mentioned to you, is this sort of pop-up idea. Sometimes I think it would be nice to have 20, 25 minutes just talking about something. And it can yeah. be inconsequential. It can be just something that's turned up. It can just be sure. whatever. I and I think that might give us a sort of... Um, I don't know, almost the sort of sort of sharpness that, that there's one or two things that we don't talk about anything else. We just yeah. concentrate on that thing, bang, and you're gone. And then if it's clearly titled, people can decide whether they want to, to dip in or not. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. Because a lot of people are, which is, again, a blessing. A lot of people are saying we sort of look forward to the release times. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I think maybe on in the next one we'll discuss figures a bit more. Yeah, we can do. Yeah. Be an idea. Because I think it's quite interesting some of the things that you've been sending through to me. I'd like to discuss it a little bit more. Ooh. Oh, those things. <laughs> 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 Can't discuss those things. No. <laughs> um, so that's it. 
for this episode. Well done for getting this far and thanks for listening. All links and references to what we've been talking about in this episode will be in our show notes. Uh, And please give us a follow and leave comments on our Instagram, Twitter or Facebook where you can be found under the username I'm Finecast. If you prefer a long copy and would like to write to us, then you can at the email imfinecast at gmail.com. So in the next episode, we're going to be looking at challenges. Yeah, just tying in a little bit with your cost a bit, something I'd like to discuss about how we react to challenges and how we can be mindful in terms of how we react to challenges. Okay. But it's, it's, a, it's a wide subject, but I've got a couple of particular examples I'd just like to, okay. to run by you. That'd be good. That's it for now. And uh, we'll see you next episode. Yeah, looking forward. Bye.